Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I uh, come to look at a Ford Transit Connect here. So, so might have you might have seen similar stories like this on my channel. Okay, we're inside the vehicle. Uh, we'll start it up. Where is it? Uh, it's a push button. Fifty-eight thousand miles. Got a spanner light on down there, and the engine management. I've got the monitor open because we're looking at that. Doors open. Okay. After a minute, you'll get a sign come up. The DPF is uh, blocked. Okay, there we've got the sign. Exhaust filter over limit service now. So we'll just press that off, and we'll get our diagnostic tool out. Okay, we've got that set up on the DPF pressure. Start the vehicle up. Let that focus and let that settle down. Now you can see always when I when I read the DPF pressures on these. Um, uh, connects or anything with this 1.5 engine they are never sorry let that focus again they're never sort of sitting in one place they're always a little bit fluctuating like that as it is so that is normal you can see there it's fluctuating between 85 to 95 millibars of pressure on the DPF um, what I'm gonna mention there straight away about that is He's had the AA out, uh, or the REC, one or the other, uh, a couple of days ago. They done a fourth regen and got rid of the light. It lasted a day, now it's back on. Um, what I will say is, if someone will, is offering to do a fourth regen on one of these vans, please do not do it. Um, have a look on my page where someone done got a, someone asked me to do a DPF clean on one of these vans recently. Uh, they then called me back a few days later saying, oh, do you know what, they just got someone to do a regen on it. Uh, but now he's got it instead of having this code. Let's go back P2463. So instead of having his P2463 code, he now had a P2002, P2002, P2002 or a P200200 code. Particle filter efficiency. So what happened there is after the regen, the, D the DPF was damaged, um, and then he now needs a new DPF. So trust me, it's a lot safer just to have your DPF cleaned like the way I'm going to do it on here and I'm showing you. The AA said there's a correlation here, but they can't find no boost leak. Now I know where the boost leak is before I even have to have to do any tests. I know exactly where the boost leak is, but we'll turn the vehicle off and I'll put a smoke machine on and show you where it is. Okay, just use the 7mm there to loosen that out so we can pull off the inlet pipe. quite stiff use the bladder from the smoke machine get that in there and we'll just pump it up so it seals inside the intake there connect up the power of the smoke machine we've got it here and that's available at launch on the launch UK website there so we'll turn it on okay it's been a minute or two we have smoke coming from this direction over here and that's why we have this replacement pipe here. We're going to get this fitted. Seven millimeter here. Open these two Jubilee clips from the back. Let's get these open. Just down there, you have a little 10 mil bolt holding the the pipe bracket on there. And now we should just be able to pull the pipe out and get the rubber tube off. And you can see there already, we've got oil on the fingers. So once we've got that off, you can see there, there's a nice big split on it. And if we look inside, we get the torch on. Let that screen focus. You can see there's actually two splits. But you can only see one visible on the outside. So we've got the new tube on. What I like to do is point the Jubilee clips in this direction. It just makes it a lot easier to get them on. Just down there you've got the 10 millimeter bolt. I use a uh, joint there just to to get in on an angle to it 
If you use an electric ratchet, it makes it nice and easy. So just down here, we got the DPF pressure holes. Using a pair of 90 degree pliers there to open that. Okay, I've now connected up my DPF uh, holes and that's connected to the gun. So I've connected it down to the DPF pressure sensor holes down there. Got that connected to the compressor. We'll just turn that on. Right, now we'll get the DPF cleaning fluid put in. I'm using a bottle of Launch UK particle filter cleaning fluid. Now we can squeeze the trigger and get it put in. So that's now going through the tube, down into the DPF and it's going to fill it up. Now we can take that out, just fill it a little bit down there. Okay, we've put everything back together there. Let's give it five minutes to let that uh, fluid soak in. Okay, we're back inside. I'm using the Launch Eurotab 3 uh, scan tool here. Same as pretty much any other Launch, I take it. Um, retrieve, what we're gonna do is go back to data stream and I'm gonna find the particle filter inlet pressure. So it's not a differential pressure sensor on this. It's a particle filter inlet pressure because it's only got one tube on it. So we're going to press OK on that. Switch the ignition on. I'm just going to change that over to a millibar rating or HPA. Now we will start the vehicle up. And we'll just keep an eye on the pressure now of the DPF. You can see there it's raised up a little bit. Let's just see if I can get a uh, a graph on it. I should have showed you the uh, pressure beforehand, but we were getting sort of 600 millibars if we hold the revs up to 3000 RPM. And we're getting sort of similar there now, 500. So if we hold those revs, here for a couple of minutes we should see that pressure coming right down so I just get that in place can I hear the tone of the engine dropping is it that the revs have dropped a little bit hard to keep it steady. So we want to see this coming down. Normal range for this at 3000 RPM should be around about 50 millibars. up and down and we'll try and hold it back around three again so we're down to 80 millibars so far you can see there we'll have a little bit of smoke coming out well quite a lot of smoke that sign changed a little bit there now to drive to clean so we're down around the 50 millibar range now 
gotta let go of the revs. That is round about normal there. Okay, so we're now gonna come back out of the live data. Uh, we probably should have just showed you the soot and stuff anyway. That may have come down. Sometimes they come down as the pressure drops. Don't know why we've got four of them, but let's see. So yeah, 139%. See if, let's see if that is dropping when we accelerate it. Yeah, it's dropping. Uh, so on, so on certain cars, this doesn't doesn't always drop. Um, you've got to go in and just reset it. But on this, it, it's re it's just dropping on its own there. You can see the soot in the closed loop there, and it's coming down in percentages. This would be the grams. I take it. It doesn't really say what it's measuring there, but. We are almost down where we need to be. So like I said, most cars won't won't do this. They won't just these percentages get locked in once you've triggered those fault codes. Now normally what you'd need to do is go into special functions here and reset the particle filter learned values. So we've got the pressure sensor learned values there. And here's the, uh, that's the particle matter sensor learn values. Static region, no, reset the particle filter learn values here. So we'll just turn the engine off, ignition on, and we'll press yes on that. Turn the ignition off. It's going to want to do one of these 30 second waits now, or 40 second waits. What I'd like to do to make sure that works is open the door and then close it and then lock the doors and then you'll see that the screen goes off and the interior lights go off as well. So if the module doesn't shut down this won't reset. Okay that's complete we've unlocked the doors now again otherwise the alarm goes off. Reset complete. Then we come back out of there we clear the fault codes. Read the fault codes, retrieve, just make sure that they're all gone. Yes. Now we can remove our diagnostic machine there. Start the vehicle up. We should have no more warnings. There you go. Now we'll just give it a few more revs and we'll get rid of the rest of this smoke here. Okay, so all of the smoke is now gone. All the fault codes are gone, so we'll just disconnect our diagnostic machine here and we should be all finished. Okay, that's it, we're done. So you can clearly see there was a boost leak, um, even though the RIC said there wasn't. Uh, we've cleaned the EPF, pressure is now down low. Uh, all done. So that's it, see you in another video.